Hello all my subscribers. So now here is a return to um, a video I used to do, but now I guess you could say in a new set <laughs> or setting, that being my room, while I sit comfortably in my chair. And um, yeah, going to review the newest Marvel movie, that being Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And this is going to be a spoiler-free review since the movie did just come out. So anyway, this movie follows a relatively obscure Marvel hero that um, is a mar master martial artist and um, has some abilities that connect to that. And this expands upon the Ten Rings organization that let's just say a little more is delved into from uh, the Iron Man trilogy with the biggest focus being in Iron Man 1 and 3. And, um, also, he is joined in this movie by his friend named Katie, an only friend, so this is very much like um, Captain America and Black Widow in the those movies. So yeah, I just thought I'd clarify that right now. Played by Aquafina, who I gotta say was a huge surprise, and she was funny. She handled the, dr not dramatic, but the more serious moments pretty well. Her performance was really over well, overall really well balanced. And I gotta say that um, she definitely killed it and um, definitely uh, highly, highly, I'm glad she'll probably be back for more because let's just say that um, if you stick around for the post credit scene, you'll be in for a huge surprise. So here she is. So yeah, in it we uh, follow both uh, Shang-Chi and Katie is there just two ordinary um, valet drivers in San Francisco. So we got another San Francisco set MCU movie like uh, Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. <clears throat> and the little bit of it that Avengers Endgame had that took place there. But um, yeah, that's not where the bulk of the film takes place though. It's kind of like Thor Ragnarok. It's just its own little section. And then after that it's completely in China. And let's just say right off the bat, wow, this movie really took advantage of the Chinese culture and there was a lot of anime inspired visuals that I loved. Some that reminded me of Dragon Ball Z, kind of convinced me a live action Dragon Ball Z can work now. Even some creatures in it that looked like Pokemon that uh, I also really liked too. So uh, yeah, and this is a major spoiler. But let's just say a certain character appeared in the film who, when I saw it, I it, I had a double take. I was like, that can't be him. And I was like, ooh, it is him. And um, let's just say one of the aspects of this movie that I thought was going to annoy me, the villain being the Mandarin, I uh, kind of uh, was disappointed because I always associated him as an Iron Man villain, and I really liked Iron Man and the Mandarin's rivalry. But um, it turns out... Um, <clears throat> this, uh, they really fleshed it out real well. They made this Mandarin very relatable and took the time to make us care for him and Shang for his rivalry with him to really bring out his inner hero, which was a nice touch. And also it had a nice connection to his backstory that I won't go into here. So just watch the movie to find that out. But, um, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> let's just say that, um, this movie very much reminded me of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon and take the martial arts side of that movie and mix it with some of the visuals and fighting of the Matrix and then throw in the Marvel side, throw that into a blender and you basically got Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So uh, yeah, here's the Mandarin. So yeah, I guess my final thoughts I gotta say on this, really love the action. The action was freaking incredible and really well shot, well edited, and like those comparisons I just made, pretty sure this movie wouldn't work if the fighting didn't work. But yeah, all I will say is, like John Wick, it's clear, you see it, there's a good amount of long takes where you just watch the action, you just watch Shang and everyone fight, fight. And the way they use the Ten Rings in the combat was pretty cool, but I'm not going to say exactly what they are. It does go into spoiler territory. But, um, yeah, it, uh, 
Definitely was uh, <clears throat> really well shot and really liked that I didn't have the quick cut shaky cam bullshit. I'm kind of glad that that's going the way of the dinosaur thanks to the success of John Wick and so glad Marvel hasn't fallen into that trap. And even when they did use quick cut shaky cam, it wasn't really quick cut. The shaky cam was just there to heighten the, the fighting, kind of like the Russo brothers directed Captain America movies. But I feel like ever since then that doesn't really happen. And it's definitely not here. Like the edits, they are nice and smooth. You see the fights, you see what moves go down. Like if Shang punches a guy in the face, you see him punch him in the face. If you see him kick him in the gut, you see him kick him in the gut. It is just, wow. I like, so glad this movie's making some money because definitely want to see this brought in. I mean, Black Widow was great as I elaborated too and the action was wonderful too. So I guess two movies have both some pretty solid action for cinematic wise side of Marvel this year. Hopefully Eternals can be the same and uh, and also Spider-Man No Way Home. So anyway, I guess um, my last non-spoiler filled uh, thoughts on this movie is um, yeah, just uh, definitely something special with the MCU and for an obscure character, don't let that um, turn you down. I made that mistake or turn you away. I made that mistake with Guardians of the Galaxy and ended up loving both movies and can't wait to see James Gunn finish out the trilogy in Volume 3 and like what this movie sets up for the future of the MCU and there's a lot of good surprises so make sure you stick around for the credits. So uh, anyway, go out there and go see Shang-Chi. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.